Let's ask your indulgence as we go into God's word. We're looking at the subject of overcoming the barrier of fear. Overcoming the barrier of fear. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, the verse 7, and this is a verse of scripture we should all be very familiar with. The Bible says that for God has not given us what? The spirit of fear. Amen? Am I the only one who is feeling afraid right now? You know, we all have to deal with fear one way or the other in life. You know, fear is a phenomenon that is an, it is part of the human nature. You can't do away without it. You know, fear is something that has impacted the life of many over the years in several ways and in several forms. And fear has even killed so many people than even a gun or a knife. It's because it's not talked about. It's because it's not in the open. So many of us don't know about it. And fear has crippled the life of so many people over the years. And that is why I feel that this morning we should deal briefly with the spirit of fear. You know, Romans 1.17 tells us that the just shall live by faith. The just. So the just means that someone who has what? A right standing with God. So if you have a right relationship with God, you must do what? You must live by faith. And living by faith basically means you walk in an ordinary person that's not hard. You know, the one who does not know Jesus Christ, you will have an understanding that they do not have. You know, you will walk in the place of obedience and you will also walk in the place of courage. But the thing is that fear is one of the things that whilst we are trying to walk in the place of understanding, in the place of obedience, and in the place of courage, sometimes just knocks us down. So how do we deal with fear? How do we recognize fear? And how do we overcome fear? But the first thing I want us to notice for those that are very busy on social media and, and what have you, the first thing I want us to notice is this, that for God has not given us the spirit of fear. That is what the Bible is saying. Which means that when there is fear in your life, you can be certain of this, that it is not God who has given it to you, right? Amen. Amen. It says God has not done what, has not given us the spirit of fear. So whenever you are fearful, whenever you are afraid, you can be sure that somebody other than God has planted that fear there. Because God did not give it to you. And God cannot lie. It is not in his character. I mean, God is a loving God. So why would he place something in your life that will frustrate you? Something in your life that will, will become a setback, will become a barrier, will hinder you from becoming all that he had purpose for you. Which loving God or which loving father will do that? And Timothy was being reminded by Paul that anytime you are fear, anytime you are afraid, remember that it is not God who has given you that. It is from somewhere else. And that is how you begin to identify the source of that fear and to do something about it. But then you may ask, what about when Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Of wisdom. What kind of fear was scripture talking about there? That fear is not a fear of intimidation. It's not a fear that is meant to make you afraid. It is a fear of reverence. Having respect for God. You know, when you fear God, it means that you have reverence towards him. You have respect for him. And that is the difference between that fear Proverbs talk about and the fear that I'm going to try to address this morning. So let's go straight into today's subject then. So the first thing I want us to notice is that fear is what? It's not from God. Amen. Fear is what? It's not from God. And the second thing is this. It says that for God has not given us the spirit of fear, which means that fear is a spirit. Fear is what? It's a spirit. There is something called the spirit of fear. 
And the Bible tells us in, if I'm right, I think that the book of 1 John 12, it says that for as many that received him, to them he gave the right to become what? The sons of God. Which means that if God has not given you the spirit of fear, yeah, it means that fear can be given and can be received and it can be rejected, right? Because John is saying that as many that received him, received who? Received Christ. So if we are saying that fear is a spirit, it means that it can be given and it can be received. It can be given and it can be rejected. So the fact that fear is being given does not mean you have to receive it. Amen? You've got the right to reject fear. And who gives fear? Fear comes from the enemy. It comes from fear. It is evil person. If you have the gateway, you know, fear has characteristics that when you see it in somebody's life, you can tell. So, for example, if you see a poor person, there are traits, there are characteristics around that person that tells you that this person is poor, isn't it? You can tell by their appearance. You can tell by their environment, their surroundings. You can tell about, about it even through their speech. Their mannerism can tell you that somebody is poor. If somebody is infirm or sick or not well, you can also tell. They will be on a hospital bed or they will be bedridden. You know, they will not be their usual self. Then you can tell that affliction world is at work in the life of this person. And in the same way, when the spirit of fear manifests itself in somebody's life, you can tell. You can tell. How do you tell fear? You know, people are fearful over a number of things. People are fearful of success. They don't know. People are fearful of failure. People have fear of height. Me. People fear of flying like my wife. Don't put her in an aeroplane. She will scream. She wants to be in control. So you put her on the ground <laughs> where she can, she can decide to jump out of the car or stay in the car. But when she's in the air, she has no control. You know, people have fear of so many things. Fear of insect. I work with a colleague that if you mention the word spider, her world comes crashing down. You know, there are so many things that we are what? We are afraid of in this world. And the reason is because the enemy brings fear because it gives him a sign. The Bible is not in the spirit of God. They say, I can only know you through your spirit. And the way the enemy can know your mind and your imaginations is through the spirit of fear. Because he does not have ownership of your life. So when he brings fear into your life, he's gaining access to your imaginations and to your mind. And what is the purpose of that? In order for him to curtail your expectations. Because if he can get into your mind, if he can get into your imaginations, which is the crazy part in the kitchen and you are cooking, or when you are in the living room and you hear a noise in the kitchen, you begin to panic. You become fearful. You begin to panic because they that water is a creature that is crippling that does the extra to set mind. And we begin to begin to mind. And when that mind, those things begin to get a hold of you. And when they hold of you, they begin to manifest. You become crippled, and the enemy is controlling you. And that is why we need to deal with the spirit of fear. In Job chapter 3, the verse 25, Bible says, Job said that the thing that I feared has done what? Has suddenly come upon me. So you see, fear can only come into your life when you permit it. You know, in my line of work, and I know many of us have come across this. You get people who, who come to you and they say that, oh, it's a lamp. On my, let's say, any part of your body on my leg, and I began to Google it. And when I started Googling it, it says it might be cancerous. And they begin to panic. And before you realize, you are opening the door of the spirit of cancer to do what? To come in because you are you fear for that's what it is. And that's how the enemy operates. Okay? Because the spirit of the spirit that is cancerous needs a, 
about operate on the own. Body to, to do what? To operate. So you feel when we begin cast of God, we get us to look into them to send that prayer. We sense we are afraid of life. Right? We are afraid of so many things. Many of us are afraid to die, which is true. Many of us are afraid to fall sick because we don't have a good experience with hospitals. We are afraid to die because we are going to us. So we don't let well. We are because we are good. We need to We need to deal with the story of fear because if you don't deal with the story of fear, what it means is that the enemy is gain an aspect of our lives and he will begin to control us and stop us from becoming all that God has destined for us. Amen. Fear can stop you from pursuing your career and your dreams. Fear can stop you from taking the hearts that God wants you to attain. And what must he bring? Amen. The bigger you are, the thing that you fear in your life. Let's to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Let's look at the story of a very familiar person in scripture and how they overcame fear in their lives. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Let's read from the verse, the verse 1. Second Chronicles 20. The Bible says that there was a man called Jehoshaphat. Excuse me. There was a king called Jehoshaphat. He was the king of Judah. He was only 25 years when he ascended the reign of being king of Judah. And he ruled for, I think, about five years he died. And Jehoshaphat was right out of his life. You know, they, the one it says that it happened as people more with the people of Ammon and the others with them beside Ammon came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea and from beyond um, Syria, and they are in Hazazon, Tama, which is En Gidi. And verse 3, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout Judea. Sorry, throughout Judah. So Judah guarded from all the cities of Judah and they came to seek the Lord. You see, it is dangerous when we begin to live our lives based on what other people tell us. Bible says that, and they came to tell Jehoshaphat of what? Of what was happening, that the Moabites, the Ammonites, were gathering to come to war, to come to war against what the people of Judah. And what happened? Bible says in verse three, he did what? He became afraid, based on what he heard, based on what he heard. So you see, sometimes we become fearful based on what what we are told. Amen. Maybe you are told that as for this thing, nobody has ever attempted it before. So don't dream of it. It will never happen. Maybe you are pursuing a career or you are pursuing a goal. And they are trying to tell you that this thing, nobody has ever done it before. You remember the story I shared about Roger Bannister? Yeah? He, he determined, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> he determined that what? That four mile, a hey, one mile that one mile barrier will be broken. He didn't allow what the scientists and even the elite athletes have said to deter him from achieving that goal. You see, Jehoshaphat was told that there is war that is coming. There is a battle that is being formed. And as soon as he heard that, he became fearful. The spirit of fear entered him. But how did Jehoshaphat deal with that fear? You see, fear can immobilize you. Fear can paralyze you. Fear can stop you from, be, from doing the things that you want to do. And here is a king who was ruling and enjoying his rulership as a king. And then all of a sudden, he's become paralyzed. He's become immobilized based on what he heard. What is it have you heard that has stopped you in your tracks? What have you heard that has stopped you in your track? And sometimes it's not only things that you hear outside the Christian dome. At times there are, there, there, there are things you hear in the church. There are sermons you hear. There are preachers you hear that can cripple you. It can put fear in you and stop you from living the life that God has for you. The Bible says that Jehoshaphat had this. And three things Jehoshaphat did. 
before we, we look at how we can overcome fear is this. Bible says that he sought the Lord. Hallelujah. He sought the Lord. Anytime fear is knocking on your door, seek the Lord. Amen. Seek the Lord. Don't ever take yourself out of the presence of God. Because don't forget I said that fear is a spirit. And Bible says in, 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 in 2 Timothy, it says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Of power, of a sound mind, and what? And of love. Which means that it takes three spirit to overcome the spirit of fear. That tells you how powerful fear is. Don't ever underestimate it. It takes the, the spirit of love. It takes the spirit of what? Of power and the spirit of a sound mind. A sound mind means what? Having an understanding. Not just the ordinary understanding everybody has. Having an understanding of what is going on. It takes this three spirit to overcome the spirit of fear. That is how powerful fear is. And Bible says that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but rather he's given you these three spirit. To overcome the spirit of fear. Amen. So Jehoshaphat in verse 3. Bible says that he sought the Lord. So anytime you are fearful. Seek the Lord. Go to the presence of the Lord. And Bible says that he proclaimed a fast. You remember when we looked at the story of Esther. When, when what? Haman was against what? Were against the Jews. Bible says what? Well, she proclaimed the fast. And, and, and Jehoshaphat did the same thing. He called the people together to do what? Well, to fast. Never underestimate the power of fasting. Amen. I'm not saying that, you know, all your life should be about fasting. No, you will waste away. Yeah, you will waste away. But don't ever also underestimate the effect that fasting can have on your life as a believer. Seek time to fast, even if it's just once a week. Set time aside, you know, and crucify the desires of the flesh. Amen? Because fear operates on the senses of your flesh. It operates on the senses of your flesh. That is why when you are fearful sometimes, you don't even want to come out of your room. I know people to date, since COVID, they've never come out of their house. Fear of going out and catching that disease. It's been how many years? Four years. They've never come out of their house. Because what they are operating on their what? physical senses. So when you go through the process of fasting, you are crucifying the desires of the flesh. You know, fasting is not for God. Fasting is for you. God doesn't need to fast. When you fast, you are disciplining your body. Amen. So make it a habit. Bible says that he proclaimed a fast. And then thirdly, what did he do? He prayed. He did what? He prayed. And that is also the power of what? Of overcoming the spirit of fear. Three things. Seek the Lord. Fast and pray. And we will thrive. When we do that, amen. And Bible says in verses 14 and 15, we don't have time to read it, but God heard his prayer. So how do we overcome fear? Quickly, how do we overcome fear? How do we overcome fear? And that is what brings us to the song that we sang today. Hallelujah. How do we overcome fear? Turn with me to 2 Chronicles 20, and let's look at, let's look at verse 15. It says this, or let's start from verse 14. It says, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jahaziah, son of Zachariah. I won't read the rest. Verse 15. And he said, listen, all you Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. And you, King Jehoshaphat, he didn't leave anybody out. That saith the Lord to you, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed because of this great multitude. Why? For the battle is not yours by who? For the battle is not yours by what? So how do we overcome fear? The first thing we must realize is this. The battle is not yours. 
but the Lord. Hallelujah. Say to yourself, the battle is not mine, but God's. That is how we overcome fear. Because I said that fear is a spirit. And that is what the enemy uses for, to gain advantage over you. But if you come to the realization that life is full of things that you and I have no control over, you will step back and let God be God. Amen? Because you will just end up what? Whining yourself. There are things in life you don't have a say over. You don't have a control over. But if you know that God has got this, what do you do? You stay back and allow God to be God. Amen. So let's come to the realization that in life there will be battles. And when the battles come, let's take a backstage and let's allow God to fight our battles for us. Hallelujah. Let's allow God to deal with the things that are causing fear in our lives. The things that are making us afraid. The things that are making us fearful. The things that are stopping us in our track from becoming what God has destined us to be. Let's face our eyes on Jesus. Amen. You see, when God fights your battles, you can be sure of one thing. That you will have 360 degree victory. Hallelujah. You see, you will have Complete victory. Why? Because there is nothing in God that shows that he's ever failed. There is no nothing, no thing. Bible says that he is a man of war. And if he himself is a man of war, he's admonishing us this morning that we should be still and know that he is what? He is God. And when you know that God has got your back, no matter what the enemy throws at you, you will not be afraid because you know God is what? Is God this. So let's come to the realization that in life there will be things we cannot change. There will be things we cannot fix. There will be things that will be outside of our capabilities. But one thing we can know is that the battle is God. And God will always fight that battle for us. Hallelujah. And that is the first thing they realized. They said the battle is not yours. The second thing is in verse 20. For the sake of time, I'm rushing this. It says, So they arose early in the morning and went into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophet, and you shall what? You shall prosper. Hallelujah. So the second thing we need, apart from coming to the realization that the battle is the Lord, is to what? Is to receive the word that has been declared over us. Hallelujah. How many of us actually believe God's word? How many of us actually believe God's word? God says he's not giving you the spirit of fear, yet still, <laughs> we are afraid. You know, God says that you are the head and not the tail. You know, he says things about us, but how many times do we actually believe God? You see, the reason why I believe God is because I know his track record. What about you? What is it that God has done in your life that can be a reference point for you? For you to say that because God did this, I know he's got this. Amen. Because even if God hasn't done anything in your life, go through scripture and you will see his handprint and his blueprint all over scripture of what he can do. And that in itself should remind you that whatever he says about you, he will do it. You know, last Sunday I talked about the fact that one thing about the resurrection is this. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead gives credibility to his word. Amen. The fact that he said he would die and he actually died and rose from the dead gives credibility to his word. So whatever God's word has said concerning your life, receive it and believe that it is true and it will come to pass. Hallelujah. Maybe in your workplace, people are putting stumbling blocks, stopping you from progressing. And you are becoming fearful of your superiors because you know that what they will stop you from what? From progressing in your career. What has God's word said concerning you in that place of work? Maybe it might be a medical report that you receive. And I'm not here to, to slag medical people because I'm one myself. You know? But when that report comes and you feel that that report does not sit well with God's word, choose to believe the report of the Lord. Amen? Choose to believe what God's report says 
about you and about your conviction. Our victory over fear is tied to our faith in God. You see, for you to receive and believe God's word means that you have faith in God. And that will give you victory over fear. Because these people guarded. You can't stop them from gathering. You can't stop the enemy from undertaking what he intends to do. Just like the saying goes, what? You can't stop a bird from what? Flying over your head, but you can stop it from doing what? From nesting over your head. You can't stop the enemy from doing what he wants to do. Let him do it. But what you also need to remind yourself is that my faith is in my God. And whatever the enemy brings, I am confident of this. That it cannot succeed around me because I'm a child and daughter of God. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Bible says that what? Hebrews 11 verse 6. Anybody reminds us? Hmm? We've forgotten Hebrews 11 verse 6. Okay, it's on the screen. He says that without faith, without faith, it is impossible to do what? To please God. So our faith is what God is waiting for, is looking for to give us victory over what? Over fear. And then finally this, in verse, let's read verse, um, just for the sake of time. Let's read verses 21. It says this. It says, and when he had consulted the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of his holiness. And as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercies endures forever. Now when the, they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set an ambush against the people of Ammon, Moab, and the Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were war. They were defeated. So the third thing you need to overcome the spirit of fear is to rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, rejoicing in the Lord must not take place after you've got the victory. You rejoice in the midst of the battle. Hallelujah. You rejoice in the midst of the loneliness. You rejoice in the midst of the sadness. You rejoice in the midst when your world around you is what? It's crashing down. You don't rejoice after the victory. You rejoice in the midst of it. Hallelujah. So you see, when you wake up in the morning and you are fearful, begin to worship. Amen. Begin to worship the Lord. Begin to worship the Lord. When you are fearful, just begin to scream and shout. They might think you are crazy, but who cares? Because they, will not, they don't understand the God that you serve. The Bible says that what? They began to praise the Lord. And that is how they overcame their enemies. Hallelujah. That is how they overcame their enemies. Let us praise God even when you don't feel like it. Worship the Lord even when you don't feel like it. Praise him because of what? Of the father it is, he is God. Just praise him. And that is how God will give you victory over those emotions that you are going through, over those fears, over those anxieties, over the things that the enemy is gaining access to over your mind. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord in spite of the sickness. Praise the Lord in spite of the medical report. Praise the Lord in spite of all the things that is going on around you. Amen. I know I have rushed this, but I hope this has been useful. We must not entertain or permit the spirit of fear to plague our lives as believers. That barrier of fear must come down. That limitation of fear must be broken. That access that the enemy has over your imaginations, over your mind, to stop the expectations that are in your heart from being manifested must be broken. Why don't we rise on your feet? Let me invite the praise and worship team forward. You know, this is the reason why I said that the song that they sang was just a testament that I'm not supposed to preach today. They were meant to preach. Amen. You know, there is a battle, and that battle is to do with fear. And as the praise and worship team are going to sing, I know time is fast spent, but I feel strongly in my spirit that we should pray for one another. We should pray for one another. Maybe you are here, and you've been battling the spirit of fear. You've been battling the spirit of fear. With every eye closed, even as we are about to enter into this time of worship, 
Just want to give you that opportunity to come forward. We'll stand with you and pray with you. We want to see the spirit of fear broken over lives. We want to see the spirit of fear over families, over destinies, over our children, over our grandchildren, over our marriages, over our health, over our finances, broken. Even in the name of Jesus. altar of the Lord is open. Just come forward and I believe that the Lord wants to deal with the spirit of fear. You want to break the spirit of your mind? You want to break that? No one will Oh Oh Victory belongs to Jesus Victory belongs to Him Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. 
made a way. Don't know how, but you did it. Made a way. Starting here. Knowing how we'll get through this day. But holding on to faith, you know best. Nothing can catch you by sunrise. You got me figured out. And now we know now. But when it looks as if we can't win, you wrap us in your arms and step in. And everything.
when our backs were when our backs were against the wall and he feels as if it was over you made our way and we're standing and we're standing here only because you made you made a way We stand in here only because. 